Hey guys and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're going to be doing yet another colour grading tutorial. Uh, I've had loads of messages people have sent me on Instagram um, how to colour grade and edit like I do for my personal Instagram page. So if you guys haven't followed me already, go ahead and follow me. Um, I am Sebastian underscore JWB. Go ahead and follow me there. Um, I will be posting some more photos. I've just gone ahead and got some more photos in the last couple of days. So go ahead and follow me there. First of all, this is going to be quite a long video just to let you know. But first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for reaching 100,000 subscribers. We finally made it, I think it was last week or the week before, a couple of weeks ago. Now, there will be a 100,000 subscriber special. I don't know what to do for that yet. If you have any ideas, leave a comment down below. We'll be doing that soon, hopefully. Um, but this is the video on how to edit like me. Um, we're going to be editing this photo today. And we're going to be taking the image from here to here um, very quickly using my color grades. Now, I have put together a preset pack. Well, I always make presets every time I color grade my photos. And all the presets will be here in this pack. So you can see currently there are 16 presets in this pack. Um, and every single time I edit a photo, I create a new preset. So I then will be updating the preset pack as time goes on. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and purchase that, that will be the top link in the description. You can go ahead and purchase that. That will be on sale for the first five days after this video is released. Okay, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and start to color grade this photo. So I'm just going to reset it. We're going to start from scratch. Uh, first thing to do is come in and crop it. We're going to go ahead and crop it 4x5 for Instagram and we're just going to leave it there. That's perfectly fine. Okay, so first thing I like to do is come straight into the basic panel. We're going to work on the colors. Now, in all of my photos, you can see I like to make them very blue. So this photo, we're going to be making it very blue. There's icy blues, quite saturated and also a lot of contrast. Um, if you go ahead and look at my Instagram, you can see all of my photos are very saturated. They've got a very specific, unique style. So go ahead and check that out. But first of all, we're going to get the temperature and we're going to drop that round to about 3,600 Kelvin, somewhere around there. That will obviously depend very much on what your photo is. Um, this photo was taken in a quite blue light, so we don't need to drop it too much um, and it kind of works. We're going to leave the tint at zero. Contrast, we're going to put up to plus 20. Uh, I like to have my photos quite contrasty. I don't like to have them uh, very flat. Also, I'm going to rush this fairly quickly. I want to try and do this. I've already filmed this video. It all went wrong. And they did that in 45 minutes. So I'm going to try and do it a little bit quicker this time. Um, so if I'm going a bit rushed, just go back and rewatch the couple of bits that you missed. Um, now, the highlights, I'm going to drop down to minus 80, minus 90. I just want to, the reason I do that is I drop the highlights to kind of keep what we had lost in the highlights. If I did it before, you can see they're quite bright. I just want to drop that back to save any detail we have in the highlights. And then for the shadows, I do the absolute opposite. I drag those up. In this case, I dragged it up to plus 100, just because I think that helps in uh, bringing back the detail in the shadows. So I've done that, increased it to plus 100. And then for the white, we're going to drop that to minus 6. So dropping the whites to minus 6 and the blacks, we're also going to drop those to minus uh, 10, minus 11. I just think that helps in sort of crushing the blacks and increasing the contrast in the image. Now, the clarity, I like to drop the clarity to minus 20 in all of my photos just because it makes the image slightly softer. It doesn't make it overly contrasty. It just sort of helps in the overall image. Um, now, I'm going to increase the vibrance to plus 9, but I'm then going to drop the saturation to minus 9. Uh, I always, in all of my edits, I always increase one and decrease the other. I never increase both because then the image can become very, very saturated. Um, so I tend to increase the vibrance and decrease the saturation. Just mess around with those two, depending on what you want. Okay, we're going to leave tone curve for now, um, just because the tone curve is quite a lot of work and takes a while to explain, but really you can see the effects of it mostly later on in the color grade. So the hue, we're going to drop to minus 100. We're going to work on the HSL now. Uh, the hue, saturation, and luminance, for those of you who don't know and haven't seen some of our past videos, the hue, saturation, and luminance are basically changing each individual color so you can tweak what sort of color it looks like. The saturation is obviously the amount of each color, and then the luminance is how bright each color is. So we're going to drop the hues in the reds to minus 100, just to make the reds slightly more pink. The oranges to minus 12. Um, so one thing I really recommend is you don't actually mess around too much with the colors in the reds and the oranges. Uh, in this case, it doesn't make too much difference because the reds aren't really affecting the skin color much, but the oranges definitely, you can see if I drop those to minus 100 or increase them, the skin tone just looks like really weird. So don't do that. Keep very close to zero with the oranges if you can. Now for the yellows, I'm going to drop those to about minus 78. I really don't like having too much green in the image, so I try and make the yellows more orange. Uh, and I'm going to get the greens, and I'm going to drop those to about minus 12, minus 10. Um, there aren't many greens in this image. Just as out of habit, I like to drop the greens for whatever greens are left in the image. Uh, now this is the fun part. I'm trying to make my photo, if you look at the, uh, the edited photo, I'm trying to make it sort of teal kind of blue look. Um, now to achieve that, 
uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the app and I'm going to actually drag these up to plus 100. Now, if you do do color grading quite a bit on Lightroom, you're probably thinking, why am I doing that? Uh, to make an image teal, really you want to get the blues and the aquas and you want to drag them left. Um, but now I'm going to get the blues and I'm going to drag them left. So I'm going to drop those to minus 19. The reason I increase the aquas and drop the blues uh, is I don't want to drop both. I don't want to drop the aquas and the blues. Um, I could drop the aquas and increase the blues. doesn't really make too much difference. Obviously the blues will have more of an effect because there are more blues in the image. Um, but if I drop both, you can see, if I drop the aquas to minus 100, you can see the image starts to look very green. So I don't want to do that. I want it to make it ever so slightly teal, but not over the top. Just a handy little trick. You can see when people uh, start off color grading, they really do start to overdo it on the teals. Um, so I've just dropped the purples to minus 100 and increased the magentas to plus 73. Saturation is the next thing. Um, we're going to try and, because blue is the overall image colour I want, I don't really want to have too much of my other colours, so I'm going to decrease the saturation to, uh, in this case we're going to go for minus 15, and we're going to decrease the oranges, I think to about minus 30. Mainly that's going to adjust the face, um, not too much in the yellows, we're going to probably put that on plus 2. Um, so that's basically all the reds, oranges and yellows dealt with. Now we can really focus on the colours we want in the image. Um, I always, it's, you probably don't actually realise this when you, uh, first of all, you drop the greens completely, we don't want any of that in the image. But when you look at my photos, they do look very, very saturated. Um, now this may surprise you, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the lumen, in, sorry, into the saturation, and I'm actually going to drop the aquas in saturation to about minus 85. Um, which has really made the image quite flat. And then I'm going to go one step further and I'm going to drop the blues uh, saturation to uh, minus 19. Um, you're probably thinking right now, how the hell do I go from here and get the saturated look that I have, that I showed you at the beginning. Um, basically that's going to happen later on in this uh, camera calibration and also the tone curve. So what I, I know that when I do that later, it's going to make it more saturated. So I'm just basically getting rid of some of that saturation to start off with so we don't overblow those colours. Um, you could always just leave it at zero and then come back to it and adjust it later. I just know later on that's what's going to happen with my colour grade, so I just sort of start off with that. Okay, as for the purples, just increase those to plus 25, and the magentas just increase those to minus 25. Again, not really going to make much difference because we haven't got much of those colours in the image. Okay, next thing, the luminance. Luminance is quite fun. That's just going to basically make each individual colour brighter. So with the reds, we're going to start off with, we're just going to darken the reds quite dramatically. Uh, and this is going to make the face look very strange um, when we start to do this with the skin colours. Really be careful here when you're doing this, unless um, you, uh, we, we are going to have to come back in with a brush tool and work on the face separately. Um, but I'm just going to mess around with these now. Uh, drop the yellows as well to about minus 26. Uh, these numbers are the exact numbers I used for the colour grade at the beginning, which is why they're very weird. But roughly within the ballpark of minus 75, plus 30, and minus 30 is going to give you a similar look. Um, now the greens we're also going to drop to minus 46. I just like to kind of, any colours I don't want too much, I like to make them slightly dark in the image basically. Now for the aquas, we're going to just increase those to plus 100, which is really going to brighten up those blues, and we're going to slightly get that icy blue that I was talking about at the beginning. Now the blues, I'm going to increase those to plus 65, and there we go, there we have it, that's the icy blue that we're going for, albeit a slightly desaturated icy blue, but that is going to change later on. Uh, the purples, we're going to increase that to plus 70, and we're going to just sort of leave the magentas where they are. Okay, split toning uh, is basically we're going to apply a certain specific, uh, some, we're going to apply a specific colour to the highlights and to the shadows, and then we're going to adjust the saturation of each. Um, so in this case, we're going to go for 218 in the highlights. For those of you who are wondering, if you press Option or Alt on your keyboard, that's now you can see that's the colour I'm putting in my highlights, and we're just going to put uh, 16 saturation. So we're going to have quite a bit of saturation. We're really saturating those highlights. And so the blues, we're going to go for 245. Again, if you want to see that colour, press Option or Alt. That's the colour we're inputting. It's kind of like a purpley blue. Kind of, I prefer dark sort of uh, purpley blues slash oranges. In the shadows and TD brighter blues in the highlights is a sort of good basis to go up. If you're going for the split toning, usually working with oranges and blues is a good bet, so you can't really go wrong with those. And again, saturation we're going for about minus 13. Usually, HSL, sorry, usually the split toning you want to leave about five saturation, but because my color grades are quite uh, saturated, that's really kind of we're now beginning to notch up the saturation in each specific color. 
Okay, now I'm going to come on to detail. Yes, this is a, a sort of step that you don't have to do, it's not a necessary step, unless you want your images to look quite smooth, which means coming to the noise reduction and just inputting about 20 noise reduction. Don't go any higher than 20 because then your image can begin to look really weird, um, really flat and sort of sort of plasticky. So you know, leave that at plus 20, it's just going to sort of flatten out the image a little bit more. Okay, now we are down to the camera calibration. Camera calibration is something people forget to do an awful lot. And if you want to get a, an orange and teal look, if you look at all of my photos again, um, I have very much, so orange and teal here, I have either orange and teal or orange and sort of purple magentas. Orange and purple, orange and teal there, uh, orange and teal, orange and teal, orange and teal, orange and teal, orange and teal. I mean, I can go on, but all of my photos have a base colour of orange and teal and that's why they all kind of fit quite nicely that with a load of other things as well. Um, but to do that you want to get the red primary and increase that to plus 100 and the blue primary down to minus 100 and already the image is starting to look a little bit more natural. Before it looked kind of weird, purpley blue didn't really work, as soon as I do that is that okay, it kind of makes sense now. Those colours just work well together. There's a nice complementary colours that you can put into your images. And even if you're not going for a massive orange and teal look, a very slight orange and teal look can make the image look that a little bit better. It can push it over the edge to what you really need. Okay, now for the highlights, like I said earlier, I'd want blues to be my main colour, so I'm gonna drop the red primary. Increase the red primary to plus 35. Um, that's really gonna boost those blues. And then one final adjustment I like to make, um, I don't always do it, but is to mess around with the green primary. Um, if I drop the green primary, you can see in this case, it kind of takes it between the sort of greens and the blues. So I'm going to leave the hues where they are, but I am going to increase the saturation to plus 21. Um, matter of personal preference, really. See what that effect has on your image. Probably won't do too much, but I kind of like to do it. It adds that little bit more. Okay, so we're now done with all of these sliders. And like I said at the beginning, I have rushed through this quite quickly. Go ahead and watch it back if you want to. Um, those are just specific colors. And I've tried to explain why I made certain decisions throughout. Um, the main things to take into account are, uh, obviously don't oversaturate your colors to start off with. You can always come back and boost the saturation if it's not enough, but it's a lot easier to color grade photos when they're not overly saturated to start off with. Uh, another thing to think, out, think about is your exposure at the beginning and also not introducing too much contrast so as to make your image look really weird by the end and really focus on those skin tones. Don't adjust the skin tones too much and really don't boost those teals. Make sure you have, if you want to go for orange and teal, that's perfectly fine, but don't make your teals, like some people, I'll show you an example. Some people will do this to their uh, and their images will look like that. I mean, yes, that's teal, but that kind of looks a little bit weird. If you ask me, I don't really like that color. So I just like to add a little bit of teal into my image, but not too much. Some of them have more teal, some of them have a bit less, but because this image is so blue, I'm not gonna add too much more teal because it'll be overpowering. Okay, so finally, we're gonna go onto the tone curve that I mentioned at the beginning. Okay, so the tone curve, uh, if you aren't already, select this button here. If you're on this one, come to this one with the point curve. Uh, it kind of allows you to sort of, that's well, the one I use. Uh, it's a lot more precise to do your edits. So if you haven't watched our previous videos, um, I always tend to put an S curve in. So one, two, three pins. The highlights, we're gonna boost the highlights like that and we're going to drop the shadows like that. Um, uh, for those of you who are wondering, I'm briefly going to mention if you want to input fade into your images, um, that is this look, that's how you do it, just lift up the shadows. I didn't have that in the image, I don't really like to put fade in my current images just because it kind of takes away from the detail. Uh, next thing is we're going to be working with the each uh, individual RGB channels. A lot of the time people don't tend to do this but it can actually make your image look kind of a little bit more vibrant and pop your image a little bit more and um, that's really how my images pop. That's kind of the, the little secret that I use in all of my images. So again we're going to come in with the S curve and the S curve for the RGB separate channels aren't going to be as extreme as the original one. They're going to be very subtle but it does help to boost the contrast that little bit more. So again we're going to increase the highlights in the reds, decrease the, the uh, red shadows somewhere around there is about okay. Um, I'm kind of copying what I've done on my previous edit so I'm trying to get it as close as I can. Uh, the greens, again we're going to do the same um, but I'm going to be very careful on the greens because I don't want the image to have too much green in it but equally you can see now all the colors start to balance out when you kind of work your way through the tone curves. Um, so dropping the greens in the shadows gives us that nice sort of purpley look in the shadows. Can do a little bit more extreme somewhere around there. I like to spend a lot of time on the tone curve when I'm actually editing. I mean, I'm not really spending too much time at the moment, but it can really kind of have a good effect on your image if you spend a lot of time on it. Uh, for the blue tone curve, I really like to boost, again, because my images are mainly blue, I'm gonna boost the blue highlights quite a bit more than the other ones, and the blue shadows, we're just gonna 
drop. Uh, probably don't want to get too low, otherwise it's going to kind of go green uh, about there. I think is good. I'll turn that off and on again. You can see the massive difference that makes on the overall image. So if I press the backslash key, you can see where we came from with that very soft uh, image to this this very vibrant blue image. Now we are basically done. That is, it, you can basically leave it there, move away, and upload it to Instagram, and it's basically done. Um, I, you'll see this image does look very slightly different to this image here, because whenever I put it into Instagram, I, I think I apply a filter. Sometimes I apply a filter at about 10%, and then I also tweak the colors individually, and also the Lux. I like to boost, boost the Lux and work on the highlights and shadows just within the Instagram app. I don't do too much editing, but I think it kind of helps just those final tweaks. When you see it on your phone, it obviously looks different to what it looks like on your computer, so it kind of helps with that little bit there. Okay, so we're gonna come all the way down now to working on the edges. I like to work on the edges uh, and introduce some of these gradient filters. So we're gonna do this, add a gradient filter here, maybe sort of a little bit bigger. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it slightly bluer. So we're gonna drop, we're gonna drop the blues down to minus 19, increase the tint to plus 63, and already the image kind of just pops a load more. You can really see the effect that has on the image. Um, this won't always work, but because I've got some blues down here, I really wanted to boost the reflections. So I came in and did that. Okay, I'm gonna leave everything else alone. I think I'm going to yeah, leave that alone, put that back to zero, and I'm gonna drop the saturation a little bit again. I don't want it to be too overpowering. Um, so minus 25, minus 30 is a good place to leave it. But I am going to boost the noise reduction to plus 60 just to make that look very glassy and very smooth. Again, matter of personal preference, but that's what I like to do. Then we're going to add one more of these to this top corner um, like that. Uh, we're going to come into just double clicking effect to reset this all to zero. And we're only going to boost the highlights and the shadows and the whites. So we're going to boost the highlights to about plus 50. 48 is a good bet. Shadows, we're going to just boost those all the way, and the whites, we're going to put that up to plus 33, plus 35, around there, just kind of making it a little bit brighter at the top. Um, I just like the look it kind of gives. Okay, now we're done. That is basically it. I did mention at the beginning, we are going to come in with the brush tool, and we're going to work on the face a little bit more. Um, so I'm going to click on Show Mask Overlay, so I can see where I'm painting, and I'm just going to paint over the face like this, and on the ears a bit. Okay. So the idea here is we're gonna try and brighten up the face a little bit more. We're gonna try and sort out these colors uh, and really just sort of do the final adjustment. Okay, so the contrast, we're gonna boost the contrast a little bit more. Uh, you can see that really does look quite weird now. So we've gotta fix that in the shadows. So we're gonna come down to the highlights. Uh, we're gonna increase the highlights to plus 60. Um, just kind of brightening up this side of the face. The light is shining on this side of, uh, side of the face. I really want to sort of exaggerate that by introducing some more highlights. The shadows, we're going to increase to plus 31. Uh, the whites, we're going to increase to 12. And we're going to drop the blacks again to um, minus 13, just to kind of add a little bit more contrast into the look there. Now, again, we're going to come into clarity. And like I said, right at the beginning of this edit, I like to drop my clarities to about minus 20. So that's just gonna smooth out the face a little bit more and it won't overdo it on the uh, contrast. Saturation, we're gonna just reduce to minus six. And then finally, the noise reduction, we're going to increase to plus 63. And there we are, that is the edit done. Um, I rushed through the brush tool quite quickly there because that brush tool is very specific to your image. You'll find if you use those exact numbers, you probably won't get a very similar look to me. Um, that being said, um, it's a good thing to do, go into your brush tool and sort of tweak minor things. I focused mainly on the outer areas of this image first because those are the larger parts. Uh, I wanted the majority of the image to be blue and I knew if I came into the face with the brush tool I could then fix the sort of colours there as well. Now what I did do when I uploaded this to Instagram is I dropped it into Photoshop and I sort of worked on the face a bit more as well. And then again when I put it onto Instagram you can kind of see it does look ever so slightly different to this edit here. I just made the oranges a little bit more obvious there and I did that in Photoshop. Uh, so if you want some tutorials on how uh, I can do some more edits um, on how I do some of my other ones, some of my more um, neon colours and how I get these effects or maybe if you want to see some tutorials on how I actually take the photos just let me know in the comments. It would be great to see your guys' opinion. Um, anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Uh, it would be great if you guys could go and follow me on Instagram. It would be great if you're new here if you could subscribe if this video was useful. Um, but I'll see you in the next one. Live long and